radio. <laughs> I'm used by my magical power. I'm sucking all the prettiness out of my old self. <laughs> I had no idea. My mother was the same way. She got pretty good. Genetics. Oh, but nice of you to say so. Well, it's true. Everybody, everybody in your age. You look very good for aging yourself. <laughs> What was your first impression of meeting the other monkeys? The first things that you thought about them First thing I thought about was, who are these guys? <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody knows the story. It was like, uh, uh, okay, you guys are the monkeys. How do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? And that was it. Um, I, I've, I've often told the story. Uh, I think it's common, but I'll tell it again. Um, we, not knowing each other, were going to go out, and the first thing that the producer sent us to do was to go do a commercial for Kellogg's up in the, up in the desert, up in the Palm Desert. And um, we drove out in Mike's brand new Buick Riviera, which was the hot car of the day, and um, didn't say a word to each other, you know. Nice day. <clears throat> that was a huge cultural event. But, uh... While you were in the monkeys, what what was the quintessential moment when you were like you sat there and you're like, wow, I really made it? Like, you know. uh, has the Monterey Pop Festival thing got anything to do? No, I'm just saying that was a huge that would be a huge event for anybody. But I mean, being a monkey, obviously, you, you experience so much in such a little amount of time. When was when was that moment when you were like, wow, I really made it? This is you know. <laughs> I remember Davey and I walking across the the the, um, the yard from the studio to the offices. Davey said, "This is the big time," and I went, "Huh? Yeah, okay, yeah, I guess so." It wasn't, but we thought it was. So. Um, I don't, you know, it just sort of dawned on me gradually. I have to say that um, I knew when we made the pilot that, and I told somebody. Uh, between the pilot and the time that the show, was, the series was sold, I said to somebody, "If this goes at all, it will go very, very big." Because I saw that Bert and Bob knew how to manipulate the levers of power, which I did, but they did. They did know that. Making their way through life without any se senior adult figure, the Partridge family had Mama. Shirley Jones, and somebody else, right? The bus driver or the guy that... Yeah. Ruben. Yeah. Ruben. Yeah. Yeah. But what was happening at that time was that um, the Vietnam War was going on. And most of you guys are too young to know this because you're all kids. But uh, during, the, during that era, it was obvious to those of us of a certain age and a certain attitude, we come into this thing with an attitude, it was obvious to us that those who were in charge of the country didn't give a damn about us. There was no willingness or desire to take care of the people in the country. We saw that again during the previous administration. In my conversation. Thank you both. Um, the Republicans can leave if they really have to, but it gets better. <laughs> and, um, and so it was like we knew. Isn't it funny? I'm just saying. Specifically, when the, um, the Vietnam War was on, were you advised not to talk about sort of serious issues yeah, oh, like yeah. that? Oh, oh Fred, is, Fred is doing things. Okay, good. Hello. Uh, Peter, I just want to say that. Um, like Adam West could never be Batman, you know, William Shatner couldn't be Captain Kirk, but you guys, even when you started out the TV show, it became a band. My favorite two albums are Headquarters and Just Us. I just want to know your opinion of, like, how it felt to be actually allowed, finally, once you guys bought out Donnie Kirk, to actually become a band. Can you talk band. just a little slower? Sorry. A little nervous, sorry. I'm a little nervous. I'm a big nervous, actually. But, <laughs> but just tell me how you felt, like, once you guys got to actually become a band. Slower. <laughs> how you guys actually got to become a band, how you felt about that. What? What about that? What's my opinion on that? Yeah, yeah. I fought like hell for it. What do you think my opinion is? There's nothing I wanted in the world in my life right then to be in the band. Tell us, Sheriff, where's the old sheriff? Okay, I'll go to the old sheriff. Hi, Peter. I'm writing a book on the film work. And 
so he wanted to see what that meant for him as an artist, as an entertainer, to be back together with us in this thing. And it was fabulous. I mean, yeah. you know, he's, uh, he's become uh, much more accepting and gentle and, and uh, uh, warm, and uh, he's been a pleasure to work with, and not that he wasn't always, but to a much greater extent. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a delight to have him with us. I hope that tackles the question. And with that, have a special surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Nesbitt! Mickey did a song, he did a song of his own, and I'm thinking I was being funny. 
Author, author. And behind me I hear Davy quietly going, I'll give you an author. <laughs> When he got wacko, he just was transcendent. Uh, and so I missed that, obviously, you know, and we missed those moments. One time, David just picked me up and carried me off stage. I don't remember why, but there was something about the timing of it that was just perfect. And that kind of thing happened a lot. And so, I, you know, of course, I missed that hugely. And I'm doing the show I got to do. I'm not going to, in the middle of the show, I mean, okay, I get a little, once in a while during the show. But, you know, I've got the show done. Hey, show to do, so I do the show. And, um, and in fact, it was great that we had, actually, pretty much Mike's idea to structure the day.